okay okay hello everyone so today what we are going to study is i have taken a particular opening uh, the philidos defense and uh, most of the traps i am going to cover in the philidos defense and i also want to tell you how you should be studying uh, traps how should you be understanding traps so what we are going to do is uh, not only just understand the traps but also see the understand the strategic ideas from the trap so what is meant by strategic idea is like if you understand the strategic idea when we come when we look at the trap i will first emphasize the strategic idea if you understand the strategic idea you can apply it across different openings and different games if you do not understand the strategic idea then you are just limiting yourself to that particular game itself a particular line okay so i will tell you what uh, from a mathematician's point of view this is called abstraction abstraction what is meant by abstraction one greek philosopher has talked about this that suppose someone says river fog ice water so what philosophers have found is that this all comes uh, in the category of water only okay so everything are connected all these four things are connected they are not separate so this abstraction is is uh, related to is actually strategic idea okay i will emphasize the abstraction more than the concrete line okay so you have to understand the strategic idea ab abstraction the second thing you have to understand when you are using the tactics finally there is some abstraction you have to group it in some idea whether it's a deflection or it's a back row mate or it's a uh, it's a decoy what type of tactics you are using that also has to be done that is also sort of abstraction not at a very rich level but still an abstraction and the third is the concrete line you know that okay if you are lucky and you encounter the same opening in the same play by the opponent you can use that but the third thing is the least important okay that okay he falls for the trap that is not what we are looking for we are looking for first is the strategic idea about the center about the central breaks i will be telling uh, talking about that in great detail the second is that when you are doing the tactics always try to figure it out what is it is it a interference or is it a decoy is a deflection it's a back row mate because if you classify it in one umbrella then when you see another problem you will be able to use that concept okay that is also an abstraction but not at the level where you can that is also abstraction but not as rich as the central things the center break when you are doing the center break when not to do the center break okay so let's start with this philidos defense is a slightly passive opening okay so grandmaster level also it is played but it is more of a surprise opening okay so it's not that it is played very often but still the idea is not to focus on the opening but i want to show you the abstraction or the strategic idea from these traps and what you can use in your games okay so the first one which i want to start with is okay let's go to the philidos thing e4 e5 knight f3 okay the knight is attacking the pawn on e5 and also controlling the d4 square okay it cannot jump to d4 but it has some control over the d4 square and uh, the modern grandmasters they play knight c6 or knight f6 these are the two moves which the modern grandmasters play d6 was played by this move was invented by a guy called philidor in the 18th century you can read about him duncan philidor he lived in the 18th century he was a great mathematician musician and a strong chess player okay so he was a phenomenal guy he was considered as a genius and some of the rook endings which he has found on philidor position is still a beautiful way of saving a draw okay so philidor was a real uh, genius some of the end game studies which he has done is phenomenal and it has stood the test of time 250 years down the line also we use the same method when we have strong computers to verify it we find that okay still that method is holding so this one is the philidor defense okay philidor's defense now here i want to tell you one strategic idea starting from this position at this point again you can play first i will tell you the move then i will tell you this what is the abstraction what is the strategic idea you can play bishop c4 there's nothing wrong in it you can play knight c3 
that there's nothing wrong in it. Okay, you are developing a piece, you are controlling the central square. So someone, if he plays knight c3, it's not fundamentally wrong. Okay, bishop c4 also controls the d5 square, it hits f7, so it cannot be a bad move. But the most often move played, the, the move which is played by the grandmasters quite often is the move d4. This is what I want you to, the first abstraction which I want you to gather. Now I'll tell you why this is an important thing. Now, if black captures this pawn, okay? If black captures the pawn and white captures with the knight, he can capture with the queen also, but uh, that is another line. But if you capture with the knight, okay? Suppose you capture with the knight. Now the first abstraction, which I want to talk about is pawn structure. What you can think of is, you can imagine there are no pieces on the board, just the pawns. Just imagine the pawn skeleton. Okay, this is an advanced way of looking at it. So only the pawns are there. So these A, B, C pawns are facing, they are symmetrical, A, B, C and F, G, H. The only difference is the E pawn and the D pawn, E4 versus D6, right? You see the difference? Now, why this is considered better for white is the E4 pawn itself controls two squares in the opponent's territory, the D, the D5 square and the F5 square. The, on the other hand, the black pawn on D6 is controlling the two squares on his, on his own half, okay? So in chess literature, there's an equator. You can imagine the equator, which is dividing the board into two halves. So this white pawn is controlling two squares of the opponent's territory. So this pawn structure, where you are gaining, where white has a space that is known, that has been shown by several hundreds and thousands of game, games of the Grandmaster that gives an advantage to white. It is not an overwhelming advantage, but white has an advantage in one dimension, which is space. In chess, there are four elements of the game, or you can say rather five elements, like you study in the periodic table, right, Anshim? You study about, okay, sodium, you study about, okay, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. You study the periodic table, right? Here, the elements are force, space, time, and the pawn structure. And the fifth is king safety. King safety is always uh, there. King safety is the number one importance in chess. So here, if you are just imagining the pawn structure, white itself has an advantage because white has gained a advantage in one of the parameters. He has a space advantage. Okay, so this is one strategic idea which I want you to understand. This you can use in any other opening also. Okay, uh, so this D4 move has an idea. Okay, that is one thing which I wanted to talk about, the pawn structure. The second thing I want to talk about is the center, the central tension. Okay, so this is again not related to this opening specifically. The central tension is a very, very important strategic idea in chess. It's not that the central tension can happen in only one way. It can also happen that pawns are on d4, e4, d5, e5. The four pawns are facing each other, okay? So this is called the central tension. So here when white plays uh, d4, he's inviting the central tension. Why? Uh, he, he is ready to invite the central tension because if black exchanges, then white gets an advantage in space. Okay, because I already explained to you, this pawn structure is beneficial to white. Very easy to understand because white has more space. And if you have space, you have small edge in the position. It's not that an overwhelming edge, but your pieces can hover, can maneuver easily. The person who is cramped, he, he cannot move the pieces, uh, pieces that well. So the second st strategic idea is the central tension. Okay, so whoever resolves the central tension, generally is at a disadvantage. So suppose if white captures the pawn on uh, d5, white captures the pawn on e5 and black captures, okay, we'll make some moves, then you'll understand this. Then what happens that then it is take away the two pawns on the board, take, out, take off the pawn on d4 and take off the pawn on d6. Then it is exactly symmetrical. Okay, like suppose I will play the move, this is called the Hanham variation, knight to d7. Now imagine white is a strong, is, a, is an amateurish player. What he will do, he'll capture the pawn here, black will capture back. Then white doesn't have a major advantage, okay? Even though this knight on uh, d7 is slightly backward as compared to the knight on f3, which is the natural square, 
but the advantage has dissipated to a great extent okay so what i mean to say whenever there is a central tension whoever resolves the central tension he is at a disadvantage if white resolves it black is getting the symmetry he will not capture with the knight it's not good we should capture with the pawn and if black captures then white is getting a better game okay but there is an exception to this if if the resolution of the central tension gives you a material advantage i will show you in the game if suppose i play a make a move like bishop c4 okay and bishop black plays bishop e7 this is one of the traps bishop e7 is a bad move now here black can white can simplify the now why black played bishop e7 he thought that black white cannot simplify the center because it is a strategic idea that whoever resolves the tension in the center will be at a disadvantage but here at this point there is a concrete reason there is a tactical idea because of which white will be better that is why he can go ahead and simplify the center okay he can resolve the central tension here okay so now uh, yeah nikhil what is your doubt sir it was for the sir it was by mistake okay okay no problem so this resolution of the central tension is i will tell you why white is simplifying in general the person who simplifies the tension in the center will be at a disadvantage okay you have to keep the central tension here white is simplifying because he is getting an advantage now the first question to me to you guys i have shown you okay white should capture it but can you calculate and tell me what would happen if black captures with the knight what would happen if black captures with the pawn in both the lines white is getting an advantage if you get i'll wait for one or two minutes if you get the line raise your hand and i will let you speak there are two possible ways of capturing so anyone who uh, calculates it uh, then raise raise your hand why do you think that resolution of the center is a good idea so someone is waiting okay some arrows he is making which is fine but yeah now uh, you calculate and see he is helping me a little bit so that is good so you have to calculate two lines what happens if he captures with the pawn what happens when he captures with the knight you get an idea vihan what will happen I'll give you a minute okay i will explain this so i told you this is an exception the only way the only reason when why you should simplify the central tension is either you are getting a material advantage or you cannot hold to the center the center is un you if you, you think that you cannot hold the center that's why you are simplifying so white takes the pawn here and suppose black takes the pawn here okay so who can find a good move from white so bishop f7 what is the idea so i capture your bishop and so then you play uh knight e5 and then black knight cannot capture back because the queen is lost no the queen oh, is protected and... by the bishop that is not working if you play bishop f7 manit don't make arrows okay it will create confusion when i post on the youtube channel so don't post don't put the arrow so bishop f7 king f7 knight e5 knight e5 queen d8 i'll take the queen with the bishop the queen is protected by the bishop that is not the reason yeah okay so this is the haste calculation calculation has to be done in a proper way without uh, without making these errors okay so here another opening principle is you should not bring the queen out in the open open okay but another grandmaster famous grandmaster jonathan rossi he has mentioned in his book of there is a rule independence in chess there is not one single rule which will hold in every position we have seen the morphy's opera house game where he brings out the queen and tries to do a scholar's mate but that was not his idea he was just using it here queen d5 is a very strong move and black is going to lose a piece by force he has to give up a piece 
there is no way you can avoid a loss of a piece. Queen d5 is a fantastic move because knight at six doesn't work. The idea so is at, it yeah, will happen. Yeah, bishop at six will happen, and you do not have the time to capture back because otherwise the mate will happen, right? So queen d5, even though it breaks the opening principle, but it is a very strong move because it is threatening mate here, and the black queen cannot come, cannot fly to e7 or cannot fly to f6 to, to prevent the mate, right? So what black can do is bishop b4 check, but I will still play c3. Not knight c3. If you play knight c3, then it's a problem. I will exchange the bishop for the knight and I'll play queen e7. So that is why you'll play c3 here. You will, you will gain a tempo here. The black bishop will go back and uh, black will have to give up the bishop. He can't go back. He has to play queen e7 or queen f6 to prevent the mate. Okay. So what I'm saying is in this case, white simplified in one of the sub lines, you are seeing that he cannot capture with the pawn because queen d5 is winning. That is why he's simplifying. Otherwise, he wouldn't simplify. Now, let's look at the other line. If you capture with the pawn and he captures with the knight. Okay. So, here there is another line. He has captured with the knight. Okay. Because white, black wants to gain some space and capturing with the knight is more logical than capturing with the pawn because there you are immediately losing a piece. Okay. Now, he takes this knight to take the pawn and then there's a double attack, queen h5. not exchanging the queens. If you exchange the queens, then I will save the pawn. If you play queen d8, I'll play bishop d8. And then the, if you play queen d8, bishop d8, then you are not getting the pawn. You might think, okay, I'll exchange the queens. No, it's, then I will exchange, I'll go back with the bishop. Okay, so that is not an advantage. But here, it's a double attack. You are attacking f7, and you are also attacking e5. So he will play g6. He has to play g6 and you win the central pawn and he plays knight f6. This is one line. Okay. So what I'm trying to, for you to understand here is, uh, let me get back to the position. This B, bishop e7 is a bad move. It's a mistake. This is an opening trap. But what you learn from this is that, okay, resolution of that central tension is generally bad. The only reason you can simplify in the center is if you're gaining some material advantage or if you feel that the opponent has a very strong attack you need to simplify it a little bit okay then you simplify and there is another third point whenever the game starts and if there's a tension in the center then both the players have to calculate the possible resolution of the center that is another thing when black is playing bishop e7 he should first anticipate what would happen if white and white simplifies the center. So the central tension actually leads to a lot of calculation because every time you're making a move, you have to think as a response to that, your opponent can resolve the center, can simplify the center. And even suppose white is making a move, uh, then he always he also has to think what will happen if the opponent simplifies the center, okay? He resolves the uh, tension in the center means he captures the pawn in the center, okay? So this is very important. This is again, a strategic idea. It's an abstraction. When you're playing the game, you have to see that if there's a central tension, then you have to calculate. It is a list of candidate moves you are calculating. One of the first moves you will be calculating is, okay, I play some other move. What will happen if my opponent simplifies the center? Okay, what would happen if I simplify the center first? So you have to keep on calculating this. This is not specific to this trap. Mind you, this is what I'm emphasizing. This is not particular to the trap. This is a general idea. This, and that is why I emphasize this more than the concrete lines. If you just understand the concrete lines, then what will happen? You are missing the forest for the trees. Okay? So you are not getting the bigger picture. You are just looking at concrete lines. That is not what I want. Okay, if you just okay understand, okay, bishop e7 cannot be played because of this reason. That is a concrete line, okay? You have to know the concrete line. But what I'm trying to emphasize is the strategic idea also. Because if you do not understand the strategic idea, then this opening will be just an opening, okay? So the other theme was double attack. Again, that is some sort of abstraction, some sort of, 
a general idea that okay we saw that when he captures here you capture here then there is okay queen d5 is winning okay that we have seen when you go this way knight here knight takes pawn takes this is also some sort of abstraction it's a double attack the theme is double attack what is a double attack it's a general idea when you are attacking two pieces at the same time or one or you can create a mating threat and some other thing yeah so see there's a mating threat and there's a queen is also attacking e5 so because of this black loses a pawn okay it and this is a very this is a disadvantageous position if you lose a pawn from the opening after seven eight moves against a strong player then you are pushed against the wall you are almost uh, dead meat okay so that is why at the grandmaster level if uh, this trap has happened many times not at the gm level in 1960s and all this is this trap has uh, happened and this is because black didn't understand the simplification he didn't understand the he, that he cannot play bishop e7 okay so bishop e7 cannot be played uh, that is another thing but you understand the abstraction and strategic idea that is what i'm trying to drive at not the concrete lines concrete lines is less important for me and for you in general so bishop e7 is a mistake this natural looking move bishop e7 is not good because of the reasons i have explained now there is another uh, move black can also simplify the center okay because he, he has some problem he can simplify the center which will give some advantage to white we'll talk about it in the next uh, trap now suppose black plays ng f6 ng f6 is another line okay black has played ng f6 this is again not what the grandmasters play because they understand that there is some problem so who can calculate and tell me i'll give you one or two minutes what do you think is the problem with this move Anirudh, any idea what is the problem with ng f6? No, sir. Okay. What about Anshim? Okay, I'll tell you. When you play this knight to sir, knight, I know this. Yeah, tell me. Sir, you play uh, e5. Then, if he captures with the pawn. so then you capture with the knight uh, e5 and if then black cannot capture back because if he captures back with the knight then bishop f7 king f7 and queen uh, d8 the queen okay, is so one one minute so you are playing first d e5 and black yes, has sir. two possible captures one is the pawn capture uh, if he is pushing if he is capturing the pawn with the pawn uh, yes You play 95 95 then you will play 95 okay so uh, okay you play 95 okay i play i take your knight so then bishop f7 i play king f7 and the queen d8 the queen is lost no it's not lost you have to calculate further bishop b4 discovered check Bishop b4 direct check, uh, direct check, and the uh, discovered attack on the queen. So you will lose the game if you do that like that. Okay, you, your what you are telling is takes, takes, right? You have yes, sacrificed sir. the knight here. Okay, I take yeah. your knight. Now you play bishop f7. Okay, if I want, I can take with the knight also. I am totally winning here. This is totally yes. winning. I will just capture with the knight. but i want to show you another fancy way i take here okay you take my queen bishop b4 this is not oh. the best the best one is knight f7 i'll just capture it you have sacrificed two pieces without reason without correct calculation and you lose the game there but here also i'm winning because i have got uh, i have got two pieces already right now what you can do is you can move your queen backward if you don't move your queen backward if you play c3 then i'll play bishop c3 knight c3 and rook d8 and now i take this you take here and black is a piece up 
black is p sub by the if you see the whole complication is a p sub but the point is what you are playing is i didn't play the best move from uh, from white the moment you play bishop f7 i will not even uh, capture with this uh, king again we have this is a flaw in calculation amateurs what they do they are that is why when we are doing mate in 2 mate in 3 i emphasize that you have to look at all the branches especially in tactical positions if you do not look at all the branches what you are assuming he will play king here and you will take the queen and then black will make some weak move that is a flaw in the calculation that is why the puzzles are very important because they teach you that you have to calculate all the branches precisely especially at this type of moments black will just capture with the knight here and you are lost you have sacrificed two pieces there is no hope here this is a resigned position right so that is not the line okay so that is what before sacrificing you have to be sure okay so knight g f6 the problem is white exchanges here i'll show you both the lines what what will happen with the knight what will happen with the pawn if you capture with the pawn i do not play knight e5 i play knight g5 now this is very strong if you remember the two knights defense there is a pawn push on d5 which happens where we go to the polyrio defense right uh, the i mean when he instead yeah. of knight uh, d5 he plays d5 and then after e d5 uh, we have discussed the polyrio defense right bishop b5 and uh, i mean when you play d e d5 then he plays knight a5 bishop b5 c6 uh, d c6 b c6 that we have seen but here there is no d pawn so this attack on f7 is very strong the attack on f7 the, with the bishop and the knight is so strong the pawn on f7 will fall okay even if you play knight b6 i will take it with the pawn and you are in deep trouble black is in deep trouble here okay because the point is earlier if you compare it with uh, what i was telling i'll just show you that position uh, so that you have an idea that let's compare with the two knights what is the difference you have the in the two knights bishop c4 knight f6 and uh, we play knight g5 right d5 this d5 move is is there for you right you see the difference the d5 move is blocking the bishop's path and when you play this we have talked about the polyrio defense takes here knight a5 uh, not get, getting into the pride lever attack because that is not what is uh, recommended at the gm level or at strong level okay bishop b5 c6 takes takes and then bishop to d3 bishop to e2 or queen f3 these are the three main lines okay now let me get back to the position and uh, quickly show you e4 e5 knight f3 b6 and uh, we are playing d4 very important move d4 is a very crucial move one idea which you should always remember even in the rai lopez white plays either at early d3 early d4 or sometimes he prepares for it c3 d4 or sometimes he plays c3 d3 and later on he plays d4 okay anyway we'll talk about it later but okay so here we talked about this and he played knight gf6 so i was talking about if you simplify the center d e5 d5 the knight g5 is very strong what will happen if you capture here is a line which uh, vihan was thinking but he had calculated incorrectly in his line he was uh, losing two pieces and that was not correct so if you take here okay i will take here right now i will take here okay when you take here it's not that white is winning a queen again that is wrong interpretation white is winning just one pawn on f7 because when you play bishop f7 king f7 happens you play queen d8 and there's a discovered attack on the queen bishop b4 okay uh, the best move is queen d2 because if you play bishop d2 i take your queen here that is uh, that is not good okay so you have to move the queen uh, i mean that is also e that is also equalish if you play bishop d2 i play queen d2 uh, i mean i play rook uh, d8 and then you play bishop b4 that also can be played uh, but 
typically what they found is this is the best for white because i'll tell you the reason what is the difference takes takes and you white is a pawn up white is if you count the pawn, pawns black has six pawns and white has seven pawns so white has one pawn advantage here and it's not that it is totally winning but it is it is definitely an advantage for white okay and one more thing uh, what i want to talk about is here if you play bishop d2 okay then black will get back the pawn he will take the queen you will take this and he will get this pawn back now the pawns are equal that is why queen d2 and when he takes the queen knight d2 protects the e4 pawn see the when the knight jumps to dallas 2 it is protecting the e4 pawn right so that is why that line is preferred okay here you have to play instead of bishop d2 you have to play queen d2 and that is how it works okay so in this line also it is very important to see the one is one level of abstraction i have already told black is white is simplifying the center because he is getting an advantage here he is getting one pawn advantage okay when you play this uh, he will capture this pawn because he sees that he is getting one pawn advantage whether you capture with the pawn or you capture with the knight he is getting a pawn that is why he's simplifying otherwise he wouldn't have simplified otherwise it would be a bad move from white strategically to simplify the tension in the center why do you want to simplify the tension keep the tension as much as you can okay so here white uh, simplified because he's getting a pawn the other thing which i want to talk about is uh, when he captured with the knight right and you capture with the knight he capture with the pawn the first one is deflection bishop f7 is a deflection theme okay this theme you have to understand because themes you can use in other problems but you should not stop your calculation there and think that black is losing a queen white is just winning one pawn you have to understand you have to do whenever there is whenever there is a conflict happening the pieces are combating each other you have to calculate till the very end and then only arrive at the correct conclusion otherwise what will happen you will think okay black is white is winning a queen and that is uh, that is uh, excellent but it is not white is just winning one pawn so one theme which we are talking about one level of abstraction is the theme deflection the king is protecting the queen by this sacrifice bishop f7 you are deflecting the queen okay you are deflecting the king from protecting the queen so he plays this and you play this the second level is discovered attack also important theme understand in themes okay this is a uh, not as rich abstraction as the other one the strategic idea because the strategic idea will hold in every opening there are some strategic ideas which are there in every opening like resolution of the center whichever side resolves the tension generally it is at a disadvantage unless he has some concrete lines by which he is winning some material otherwise you resolve the tension you will be at a disadvantage so as anirudha is showing us bishop b4 is a is not only the move you should focus it is a discovered attack okay understand the themes if you do not understand the themes you cannot use it in other games okay and once queen d2 happens then you uh, take this and knight takes and white is upon okay still lot of work to be done to win the game but it is an advantage okay so before i end this session and go to the next one and talk about other other traps so what we have seen till now apart from the strategic ideas both the queen side development pieces are not working whether you play bishop e7 you are getting into a problem you are playing knight gf6 there is some other problem in that both the moves king side development is not working generally you develop the minor pieces of the king side this is what william steinitz has also told that first if you want to castle king side develop the king side piece if you want to castle queen side then you play, develop the queen side pieces so typically here white black wants to castle king side okay but both the moves bishop e7 and knight gf6 it runs into problems because of the concrete lines we have discussed right we have seen that in both the lines uh in i mean both the moves they, they they do not help black and because of concrete reasons white is getting a material advantage 
not much but one pawn advantage in every line at least one pawn advantage and if you play very bad moves then sometimes the queen d5 happens where you are totally lost you can resign the game piece down and uh, you are dead move okay so what we'll do let's uh, discuss some more uh, traps in this in the next part